What's the most effed up thing you saw at a sleepover? My friend's older brother would get mad at her for small things, went in his room, lost the TV remote, shut a door too loudly, and proceed to beat the crap out of her. Pull her hair and hold her down and punch her in the sides, literally throw her across the room. He was almost 10 years older than us and easily had 100 to 150 pounds on her. He would eventually tire from the beatings, leave the room, and she would go back to playing with me like nothing happened. I remember being so unbelievably shocked by it but eventually became desensitized because of how normal it seemed to her, and how unfazed she was by it. I was in the fourth grade when I slept over at a friend's house, it was me and two other girls. It was my first time sleeping over at someone else's house. I was always too scared to stay overnight anywhere but her and I were close and when I hung out at her house during the day we always had a great time. Well I'm not sure what happened but we were eating popcorn and I spilled some kernels down my shirt. We all ran to the bathroom laughing and got the kernels out some ended up in the sink. When her older high school age brother found out he proceeded to beat the hell out of her. Me and the other girls ran to her room and shut the door, all we heard was her screaming. I felt so guilty I just wanted to disappear. She finally came into the room red and covered in tears. We never talked about it again, and I didn't have another sleepover till high school. When I was like 9 or 10 I spent the night at a friend's house. I knew his mom was pretty strict but holy crap did I find out how much. He did something really minor like leave his socks in the living room and she started shouting at him like he left a turd on the floor or something. Then he pissed her off again that night and she wailed on his ass so hard that it scared me. She was a psycho the way she was spanking and shouting at him. I hated her guts after that night. Edit, I have no idea how this guy turned out. We moved away soon after and googling his common name is like looking for a John Smith. Also another guy with the same name was murdered in the same town, it wasn't him, so it's buried pretty deep. Had a friend like that, went to his house and accidentally went in the good living room and he freaked out. I thought it was super weird but he got the vacuum out in order to remove my footprints from the living room carpet, it was in the thick pile, not dirt or anything, but it meant you could see where I walked. For a second I thought it was funny but he was so scared of his mom that it really freaked me out. They also had to shower sitting in their bathtub so that they wouldn't splash water everywhere. Super sad that people that crazy even have kids in the first place. That is a really crafty way to grow up, I hope he's okay. Yeah, controlling parents breeds a lot of resentment. Especially when you hit that stage when you start thinking for yourself, wanting privacy, and question what you've been told your entire life. Nothing like having parents you can't emotionally trust and you're always afraid of. My mom was like that and of course all her friends from church were like that. Having a sleepover with a church friend pretty much guaranteed a spanking. They were all weirdly okay with spanking each other's kids. Like the first time I got spanked by someone else's mom I thought my own mom would flip out. She literally just gave me another spanking. We would get in trouble for the stupidest reasons too. We didn't want to play with my friend's baby sister once. You would think we killed someone. I got one of the worst spankings of my life. And it wasn't even my own mother. And then people wonder why their kids leave them in retirement homes and never visit. That is the very best. I beat my kids but why they don't show up at the home? They are genuinely bewildered. My mom will brag to people that she beat me in front of me. She isn't a part of my life anymore. This sort of thing happened in the town I grew up in. Except after the mom spanked her kid's friend, the friend got a knife from the kitchen and stabbed her to death. The whole town was divided on whether or not he did the right thing, he was obviously acquitted and I think most parents stopped spanking their kids after that since all the kids knew they would likely get away with murder if they wanted to. Well, that escalated quickly. It's actually more common than you'd think. Imagine hitting a kid with significant PTSD from abuse. Now you abuse the kid and get the dice roll on what the response is. Don't hit your kids. Or other people's kids. Kid who had a pee jar in his closet. It was a gallon pickle jar, if he had to pee in the middle of the night he had to use the jar. Once his mom put him, us, in his room for the night we weren't allowed to leave his room until she came to get us the next morning. How did they make sure of that? The doorknob was turned around backwards so they could lock us in. Holy crap my inbox, okay, the jar was for emergency use only and was emptied and washed in the morning if he used it. 
probably rarely used it since most kids that age can hold it all night. He was a bad kid and stayed in trouble. Pretty sure the lock thing was to send him to his room and make sure he stayed there. Don't know about the parents' sexual habits but I'm not surprised that most of Reddit immediately jumped on the drug-fueled orgies responses. What if there was a fire? That's what the gallon of pee was for. Edit, holy cats did this off-the-cuff quip blow up. I had no idea that this would resonate with some cultural meme that I had never heard of. I had to go look at the sidebar of r slash unexpected 2 and then of r slash 2 to learn that there's something called Team Fortress 2, where I guess they use pee bottles? To put out fires? And what the heck is Gerardi? Thanks for all the awards, kind strangers. I didn't know there was a table slapping award. Not really effed up but I was terrified one night I slept over at my friend's house. I wake up in the middle of the night because I felt sick. However, my friend wasn't in his bed and both clocks were broken and stuck at some random time like 1.38 am or something. I was convinced that time had frozen and everyone disappeared. I remember crying and being too scared to go downstairs to check the microwave clock. Eventually I went into his parents' room and woke up his parents. My friend was sleeping in his parents' bed too. Laughing out loud edit, word. I remember I was once wishing for time to stop, and all of a sudden I felt really weird in my shins, and when I looked up, my mom wasn't moving and I got super scared. Obviously time didn't stop as she moved a few moments later and there was background sound that I didn't realize was there. When I was 12, we went on a family trip to Vegas. I woke up in the hotel to my parents having sex in the bed next to me. I was trapped and had nowhere to go. My mom said something along the lines of stop we're going to wake up the kids my dad gets up walks over to our bed and rips the blankets off our faces and said see fast asleep. I should have won an Oscar. Edit I had no idea this would blow up. Thank you for all the love strangers. I have no idea how this works huh? So this obviously messed with me going forward. Any trips after this, I just waited my parents out. They would say small things like going to bed anytime soon? And I'm just flat out like nope. They would fall asleep and I won. In hindsight as an adult with kids, I do feel bad for co-blocking every future family trip, smiley face. It would have only been better if you had your eyes wide open blank stare. I feel like someone like this would have just made direct eye contact and repeated, fast. Asleep. Why was that his go-to move? What would he have done if he ripped off the sheets and just saw? Slaps you. This bad boy can sleep for miles. When I was in elementary school, I got invited with my sister to a birthday party of one of her friends. Everything was going fine for most of the night, and then the catastrophe happened. Her mom came down to the basement and was clearly very upset, but didn't explain why. She then had each of us line up on the stairs from the basement to the ground level of the house and brought us in one by one. I wasn't the first in line but no one was telling us what happened once it was their turn. Finally I was up, and her mom took me into the bathroom and showed me a trash can with a poop in it. She was basically on the verge of tears, pointing to the trash can and asking me, is this your poop? Is this your poop? It wasn't. We never found out whose it was, or at least I wasn't told. We have joked that someone will finally come forward on their deathbed, but my sister and I have since lost contact with those girls, so we may never know. This is the last time I'm asking, God damn it. Slams fists on table is this your poop? This one is my favorite haha. -ha. We were playing hide and seek with my friend's little sister and I went into the unlocked bathroom while loudly saying where could she be? Maybe in here? The little sister was five, we were ten, and the father was jack hammering his dick while staring at himself in the bathroom mirror and had his other hand tweaking his nipple. I left and walked home. The effie was masturbating to himself? You've got to love yourself first. If you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Can I get a gay man up in here? I was 13 to 14 and staying the night at a friend's house with two other girls, when we were woken up by a loud popping noise from her brother's room. Naturally four curious girls went to see what the hell he was doing at 3 in the morning. Her mom came running up the stairs about the time we entered his room, and quickly herded us back out of his room in hysterics. 
It took my brain forever to register that he had shot himself in the chest. Luckily he survived, and I never had another sleepover at someone else's house again. Plenty of nightmares though. If you don't mind me asking, was it an accident or suicide attempt? He claimed accident, but he had a lot of stuff going on, so we all assumed failed suicide. A gun going off indoors is a sound you never forget. The dad's mistress came over. Apparently the mother knew of her existence and it had been putting a strain on things. My buddy and I hid in the basement while the wife and mistress were screaming at each other upstairs. Shockingly did not cause a divorce. I was staying at my buddy's house when his dad showed up. His parents were separated but divorce hadn't happened yet. Apparently mom had a new boyfriend over and somehow dad got wind. I still remember hearing him pounding on the front door and screaming while his mom and the boyfriend yelled back. Eventually the cops came and took his dad away for disturbing the peace or something like that. Same thing, we were huddled in the basement listening to all of it and then his mom came down and acted like nothing had happened. Asked if we wanted a snack or something. I just wanted to go home. In a similar story, one of my best friend's parents were divorcing, and his dad had a restraining order put on him where he couldn't come near my friend's mom, or their house. Well I didn't know this when I went over to his house for a sleepover. Myself, and a common friend tell him we're on our way, and the friend whose house we're going to says he's getting home shortly, he's just running a few minutes behind, and just to go to into his place and hang out until he got there. So we did. About 5 minutes later we hear something downstairs thinking my friend and his mom got home, so we head downstairs and see his dad standing there in the dining room. There was a brief few seconds where we were all confused and stuck in an um moment. Next thing you know his dad starts screaming out who the f are you and what the f are you doing in my goddamned house. His dad angrily pulls out his phone and dials his ex-wife who the f do you let just come into my effing house like this. Screaming into her voicemail. Next thing you know their housekeeper, a tiny Haitian lady comes down the stairs ready to throw down yelling at the dad what are you doing here. Get out get out get out. I'll call the police. Get out. Meanwhile myself and the friend I was there waiting with were just standing there like a deer in headlights. The housekeeper and he yell back and forth, he gets very nasty, and eventually storms off. Without missing a beat the housekeeper asks us if we want her to make us food. We're completely in shock still, wanting to just go home. But at this point we'd caused enough trouble though that we felt obligated to stick around. We sat there waiting for our friend to get home for what felt like an eternity. Ends up being that night we found out about the restraining order, and that his dad had beat his mom previously. I don't know what specifically happened after that but he ended up getting pummeled in court. The message he left her, in conjunction with the housekeeper seeing him really effed him over. He lost almost all assets to her, and he moved to Texas. To this today we still don't know what he was doing there, or how often he returned to the house unnoticed. But the one time he was caught I was in the middle of it. Bless that lady. What a legend. When I was about 15, there was a couple in my cousin's congregation that offered to host a sleepover for some of the teen girls. I was staying with my cousin at the time, so I went with her to their house for the sleepover. When I got there, I realized that this couple only had one kid, and it was a little boy, maybe six or seven years old. The couple set us five teenage girls up in the basement, it was furnished and carpeted, not a creepy basement, and the wife set out a bunch of snacks and then we didn't see her or the little boy the rest of the night. But the 30-something dad spent most of the evening with us offering us sips of his Kahlua drink and leaving the liquor cabinet doors open when he would announce that he was going to another room. I was creeped out, but I was so sheltered at the time that I didn't understand why exactly until years later. This was so uncomfortable to read. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Did you tell your parents about it? I recently told my mother about it, 20 years later. I never mentioned it at the time, because I didn't really understand why I felt so creeped out. I also didn't really know about sexual predators and what to look out for. Thankfully for me, I just thought that guy was weird and didn't want to drink at his house. I wish I would have known at the time to call him out or at least let someone know. I always find it so fascinating when I think about how innocent the first was even as a teenager. I just can't fathom that an adult would want anything to do with a 12 or 13 year old. My parents had had the talk with me about adults not being allowed to touch you, but I guess it just didn't click. As a young guy, 
I had an experience like yours where it didn't hit me that the guy was being inappropriate, I just thought it was different. I'm glad nothing happened to you. But man that was so uncomfortable to read. I wonder if his wife saw any red flags or if she encouraged it. Sounds like the wife was in on it. If his wife saw any red flags. An adult guy, spending time alone with, and drinking alcohol in the presence of, several teenage girls not related to him? What red flags are missing here, cocaine and handguns? Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.